Hey everyone, Irix Guy here. Uh, now, if you haven't already checked out my other video, my unboxing video, you might want to check that out as well. I posted an unbox unboxing video of this uh, of this laptop as well. Now, this is the current model uh, referred to as the Ivy Bridge. Uh, the Ivy Bridge chipset uh, brings USB 3.0 to your uh, to your MacBook Air. Now, this is in a case. You can check out my other video on that. It's a case I got off of Amazon very affordably. I like to take great care of my fine computing products, and this device is no exception. So let's get started with a technical review. I'm going to uh, address some very technical items as well as some very basic items. Now this video is, uh, is geared towards anyone that's considering the purchase of a new computer. Uh, maybe you need a desktop, maybe you need a laptop. Uh, maybe you need an ultra lightweight and ultra thin laptop such as this MacBook Air. And what are the advantages and the disadvantages? Well, uh, for starters, as you can see, this thing in this case, this M cover case that I put on, it looks really cool. This doesn't add a lot of thickness to the laptop, uh, but it definitely adds a little bit. So uh, it's, you know, it's something you may or may not opt for with your own MacBook. So looking at the top, of course, on your Apple, you've got your Apple logo that'll light up uh, when it's powered on. On the left side of the device, and this is if you were looking at the screen, you've got your, to the leftmost right there, you've got your new Mac. Oh! <laughs> See, it's important to put this thing in a case. Um, on the left side, you've got your new MagSafe power adapter. And I've got that over here so you can see... Uh, so you can see what it looks like. It's got a connector on this end. It's magnetic. Uh, one thing to point out, if you, if you owned a previous generation, now this is the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, prior to this new 2012 model, your MagSafe adapter is probably not the same form factor. Now Apple does offer a conversion kit to where you might be able to reuse your existing or extra uh, power adapter with your new MacBook Air 2012. But, just something worth pointing out. So that's that. Works really well. And the good thing about the MagSafe is that if you're stumbling around your house and you fall into the wire, there's a good probability that your laptop will stay on the desk, your power cable will disconnect, and you probably won't damage your laptop. One of the greatest features of this new 2012 MacBook Air is the USB 3.0. Uh, USB 3.0 is a lot faster than the USB 2.0 that was present in the previous Airbook, uh, MacBook Air model. Uh, basically what that means is that if you're connecting an external hard drive, etc., you're going to get a lot faster response. And that's important if you're, if you're using uh, hard disk intensive applications such as uh, maybe iMovie or Final Cut Pro. Uh, that increase in speed will really help you improve your time that it takes to perform your edits. You've got your uh, headphone jack. You can put the, if you've got an iPhone 5 as well, you could use those new earbuds, those new ear pods in there if you wanted to. Uh, looking at the other side of the device, uh, this is something, and I'm going from left to right, this port right here is something very important. That's an SD card slot. And the primary the primary reason I purchased this MacBook Air was to have an on-the-road, in-the-field device that I could import my photos to, you know, make some quick edits, import my videos to, make some quick edits, and then ultimately take the, uh, the MacBook Air home with me and then offload it to my network-attached storage device for long-term storage. On this side, you've also got another USB 3.0 port. And then that's the new Thunderbolt port, the high-speed port. I can use it for a, for a myriad of devices, uh, most uh, popular being an external display, the new Thunderbolt display, or uh, Thunderbolt disk drives. And Thunderbolt disk drives, uh, they greatly surpass the performance of USB 3.0 external disk drives. If you were considering a MacBook Air, this SD card slot is something you will not get on the 11-inch model. Uh, so that's definitely a selling point for the 13-inch versus 11-inch MacBook Air. 
Now, sure, you can just plug in a, a memory stick that has a uh, an SD card inserted in it. But what if you leave the memory stick at home and all you got is your camera? If you don't have this card slot, you're SOL until you get uh, get back to where you have that adapter. Now, before we pop it open, as I mentioned, I said it did not come with a uh, with an Ethernet port. So this is the adapter I opted to purchase when I bought, excuse me, my MacBook Air from uh, from Apple.com. This is a gigabit Ethernet. Excuse me, I got the hiccup. Gigabit Ethernet, and it simply plugs into your Thunderbolt port. Very easy to carry. Not going to take up a lot of extra uh, real estate in your backpack or your pocket uh, when you're on the road and and desire the. Uh, the extra speed of gigabit wired Ethernet versus the integrated wireless. So let's pop the top on this puppy. Uh, one thing, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to power it down. And the reason I want to power it down is I want to give everyone a true review of how fast, and this of course has the SSD drive, a true feel for how fast this thing boots because of the SSD. So now we're powered off. Rawr! We got a cat coming by. And to power it on, and one thing you'll notice on the MacBook Pro, it had that little silver power button to the side. This power button is actually integrated into the keyboard. Now, if you're noticing the murkiness of the keyboard, it's because with my M cover, I opted to install the, uh, the keyboard protector. So if I spill something on it, um, I, the probability of that liquid damaging the internals of my device is uh, greatly lessened. So to power it on, the power button is now part of the keyboard. So here we go. Let's time this. My camera says 710. Boom. We're at 715. 10 seconds. 12 seconds. This sucker is already at the login screen after 12 seconds. I'm going to pan away because I don't want you to know my personal password. So we're logged in here. And uh, as you can see, there's Apple's website zipped right up. Uh, one thing you'll really notice with this, uh, with the... Uh, the MacBook Air, because it has a solid-state hard drive, is the snappiness of which all of your applications load. And I'll do another, I'm going to do another video actually detailing the, uh, the performance of how quickly applications run, so check those out. But for this video, I want to, I want to talk about what I did opt for when I purchased this. <laughs> I did opt for the maximum memory that's available on the MacBook Air 13-inch which is 8 gigabytes. It comes with four standard, uh, but I felt for a roughly the $100 upgrade that it was justified. And that's something you need to keep in mind if you're considering the, uh, the MacBook Air, is that once you get it, it's not user upgradable, meaning you can't go to newegg.com or whatever, purchase inexpensive memory, purchase inexpensive hard drive upgrade. No, it's all built into the motherboard. So get what you think you're going to need. Uh, personally, I opted to upgrade the memory to 8 gigs, and also I didn't go for the largest solid-state hard drive because my intentions with this laptop are to uh, just have enough storage space to, you know, to, to make some edits while on the road, uh, maybe dump and edit a considerable amount of video, but once I return to the home, to offload it to my network-attached storage and or my iMac desktop. So I did get the 128 gig SSD option. The SSD is, is incredible. As we saw when I powered this on, it's almost, well, I mean, compared to a standard hard drive, which is your 5400 RPM hard drive, it's absolutely incredible how quickly that powers up. And you also, not that it's a matter, not that it matters, but when you're dealing with a, with a traditional hard drive, like a 5400 RPM, you're going to get that noise, that clicking noise, that and you're going to get the vibration and all of that. This thing is whisper quiet, and it's it's just really cool. 
Um, one thing that I was pondering when I before I made my purchase was okay. Well, it's a 128 gig hard drive in today's standards. That's not much. Should I go ahead and pay more and go for a 256 gig or maybe the 512 gig option? And of course, I didn't want to spend this. This laptop was not one that I wanted to use as a desktop replacement. Uh, this laptop was a laptop that I strictly wanted for travel and, and work in the field. So 128 was perfect, and 128 gig SSD was perfect because out of the box, the first thing I did, I went into About My Computer and checked the available disk space. It was right at about 100, 100 gigs. So it came pre-installed with OS X Mountain Line, came pre-installed with iLife. Of course, the installed version was not 100% updated. So I went to App Store, you know, ran my updates. It updated, I think, iPhoto and installed a, a security update for, uh, for Mac OS X Mountain Lion. After doing that, I was right just below 100 gigabytes free. I think it was around 90, 99 or something like that. Uh, beyond that, I went in and installed the applications that I use. Uh, the apps that I use on this, I use Final Cut Pro 10, which is downloadable from Apple App Store, and Compressor 4, which is also available for download from Apple App Store. Uh, with all that installed, uh, currently I have in the, in the mid to low 90 uh, gigabytes free range. And when you think about it, yeah, compared to a desktop computer with a few terabytes of storage, that's not much. But you got to configure, you got to take into consideration what are you using this laptop for. If this is your desktop replacement laptop, it can work for you, and it can work for you from the standpoint that you could connect either an external USB 3.0 hard drive, external Thunderbolt hard drive. Maybe connect it to your network and you've got a NAS, a network attached storage hard drive on your network. So you can put plenty of external storage into this. If the display is not big enough when you're working at home, you can, uh, you can connect it to an external Thunderbolt display. One thing that you're not going to get with this, if you're big, and when I mean big, I mean hardcore video editor, where you're editing gigs of, uh, of HD video a day. If that's your primary intention and it's not your secondary computer, you're probably going to want to look for, a, for at the iMac or the Mac Pro instead. Although this will do it and it'll do a fine job, you're going to have to step away for an extended period of time while it performs that Final Cut Pro 10 rendering. So just a word from the wise there. Um, and, and like I said, it does great. And because of the SSD when you're in Final Cut Pro making the edits, I mean, it's silky smooth. But when you're actually rendering and exporting that video for uh, upload to a uh, site such as YouTube or, or uh, rendering to burn to a Blu-ray or maybe a DVD, that's where it's, uh, where it's going to slow you down. So, you know, definitely if that's your, if that's your uh, purpose for purchasing this laptop, you know, consider, definitely consider uh, an iMac or... Uh, Mac Pro instead. And I wouldn't even for video editing, for hardcore video editors, I wouldn't even recommend even the high-end MacBook Pro. And the reason being is that although those are snappier than this, they're still not going to be as lightning fast as your iMac or MacBook Pro uh, desktop line. But all in all, I mean, I am 100% I am satisfied with this purchase. And I know there's a lot of people out there saying, Oh man, those new MacBook Airs and those new MacBook Pros that are, uh, you know, that have the solid state hard drive and the memory integrated. If one one thing messes up, then you got to do redo the whole thing. Well, that's true. So you might want to consider the Apple Care plan. I didn't get Apple Care because I like to live on the edge. And uh, if this thing goes belly up, <laughs> I guess I just go down with the ship. It's like, oh no, I lost a laptop. But no, all all seriousness. I've uh, owned multiple MacBooks, MacBooks back since the uh, uh, since the pre-Intel days, back when you had power PC chips in them, and I've had nothing but a, an excellent experience with the MacBook uh, 
MacBook laptop. So, great computer. Check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And uh, feel free to subscribe. I've got uh, an abundance of other videos, and I'll continue to post more. If there's some sort of MacBook Air stress test that I have not yet performed, and you'd like to see me perform it, let me know. And I will most definitely be happy to uh, uh, to try to put a video together. Thanks for tuning in, and y'all have a good day. Again, awesome, awesome laptop, ultra portable.